Hello, internets. Welcome. Well, yeah, Hello. welcome to Coding with Chad. I wonder if anybody's here. Probably nobody's here. <laughs> Not yet. Send send me the link. Send you the link. Um, it's in the it's in the uh, calendar invite. You can just copy and paste it. Oh, cool. I'm more organized today. That's super organized. I'm super organized. All right. Let's see. Put this here. Um, all right. I'm going to move you guys down to the other window. Well, I guess I could keep you up we for the time being. Can you put our special, the special one up there? Let's turn on. Yeah, see if it looks good. Okay. Have special Looks lights. <laughs> you have special lights. That's nice. I like it. Okay. I took one of Dad's um, lamps and then posted it up back there. It looks nice. I like the the uh, sort of uh, rose color. Yeah. In real life, it's a lot more red, but I like the pink look better. Hmm. All right, so let's. Uh... All right, let's talk about what we're gonna do today. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I thought that what we could work on is uh, uh, one of the questions you had, Rickles, was um, how do we deal with ha uh, like events when when we're um, doing stuff. So like, I'm guessing like clicks or things that happen on the server. So I thought what I would do is I could show, show how that stuff works and okay. then uh, we can try it out. I can show, um, so let me show you, I, I did a few things um, since last time. So it's useful to maybe go over the things I did. Um, so this is our backend code, main.py. Oh, and I should share my I should share my stuff with you guys. Let me sign in, and then that way. So here's also what I was thinking: like I can I can guide you through the code, and then with you sh uh, sharing, um, you can just hop in and do things with me. How does that sound? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like we be live sharing into your code. Yeah, into my machine. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up our our server. So this is where the front end is living, poker fe. So this starts up our front end server. Um, not start npm run dev. Is that it? I think that might be it. Let's try that there okay so now our front end is running and uh, we also have a back end um, and I did a bunch of work to make these two things sort of be able to talk to one another um, so let's open up a back end and uh, let's start that so the way to start the the back end is with UV corn All right, so now we have a front end and a back end running. And I've set it up so that the front end proxies requests to the back end. So we'll be able to make direct requests now in the front end to the back end. And so we can start building a thing uh, by developing in both repositories. Okay. So I wanted to show you, I thought we could start with, um, with this event here. So I wrote this uh, little test thing. Uh, oh, let me, sorry, I didn't finish live sharing. Let's start the live share. Uh, invite participants. Um, invite. Okay, I, need, I think I need to paste it to you guys, huh? Okay. Send it to the chat. So 
you guys can uh, join the session from your machine. This is where you'll encounter an issue. If you believe. Oh, okay. So he's at the. Yeah, I'll copy it. Copy link. To VS Code. Oops. How'd you do it? Um, it just says starting. Signing in. What are you eating, Dan? Watermelon. Yum. I sliced up the watermelon yesterday. Is it difficult? <laughs> nope, because I got a really nice watermelon knife. Is it a knife just for watermelons? Well, it's actually a, a knife for bread, but it's sort of designed in a way that uh, it's not quite serrated. It's more like wavy. Anyway, it's got a fun story to it. Uh, I went to... Um, William Sonoma to buy this spread knife and the guy at the store asked me what I was looking for so I told him I was looking for a bread knife he said we, all, we have all kinds of bread knives and he took me to the knife section and he started showing me all these fancy like Japanese knives like a hundred dollars two hundred dollars and he's like the this is our these are our uh, you know some of our really nice knives this is made from the carbon steel but if you're looking for a knife that isn't quite so proud of itself we have these other knives over here and i said actually no i want a, a knife that's very proud of itself please <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a knife that's full of itself no proud of itself not full of itself oh okay <laughs> I can get behind that, I guess. <laughs> but what was up with the other knives? Were they just less expensive? Hmm. Yeah, um, they are what it are. What they are, I guess. I don't know. I watched um, this video of this girl who makes Japanese food, mm -hmm. but she makes it all vegan style. Mm -hmm. So she tried to. Well, she didn't try. She made this tuna tartare, but instead of tuna, it was watermelon. Yeah. Or like a steak tartare type of thing. Mm -hmm. But it looked so delicious, even though I knew it was watermelon the whole time. Mm. She had sauces, and she battered it. It actually looked delicious. All right, I think I am here. Yep, I see you, but it looks like you're only signed in as guest. So I guess you didn't oh. sign in to your GitHub account or whatever. But that's okay. okay. I can sign that Satch just to make it cool. Make it cool. <laughs> no update, please. Ah, there you are. Now you're signed in as Sachi Sharma. Okay, I, I am Sachi Sharma. All right. Okay, so are we, um, maybe I should uh, quickly explain everything from the top. Yeah. Do we want to like have a little sort of little review session about poker? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so let's, let's, let's go, let's start there then. So we started up two servers. Okay. Let's take a look at the first server. Uh, so here's the first server. Right? Right, yes. And so, the front. so you'll notice that something's slightly different. There is a hello button at the bottom. <laughs> uh, yeah. I added this button so that I can teach you guys how to add buttons and make them do things in the app. 
So yes, I love it. So this is our first yeah. server, and this is the front end. The front end server, I mean. Now we also have a back end server, and that's this Python one here. And if you open up the the Python one, it uh, gives you detail not found. There's nothing there. Oh yeah. But you that's can go that. here, slash, and type docs. And if you do that, you get our fast API docs. This is where we can expand on this API and make it do more things. Okay? So, sorry about the plane. It's probably going to get louder. I'm going to close the window. It's not too bad right now. Yeah, it's not too bad. I don't actually hear it. Yeah, so unfortunately, the uh, uh, climate change is real, and it's real hot here in Seattle. OMG, it's so hot here, too. Yeah. Like 30 degrees and humid, like crazy person yeah and uh seattleites don't don't know how to deal with the heat none of these houses um, yeah they don't have heat. yeah so that's a thing okay so anyways so, so like yeah closing the windows not something i really wanted to do <laughs> yeah actually maybe you should open it again <laughs> no that's okay the problem is like you guys won't hear the plane because Google Meet does a great job of filtering out noise, but the stream is not going to filter it out. Uh, so it's going to be very loud on, on the interwebs to all our participants, who's, cu who's currently zero, so it's probably not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the VOD, right? The VOD. Yeah. The VOD. Okay. So, so the idea here now is the functions that we write here will return things to the front end, okay? So here's this front end bit of code doing its thing. Do you remember when we made this? Yeah, yeah, we, so we deconstructed everything. Um, and then we removed the components that we didn't need uh, so that we could have some, like a plane to mm -hmm. work with. Hope it doesn't have any. So if I click this try now and execute, you'll see what this thing does, right? And it returns the cards. Here's the big payload that it returns. So this is returning our deck of cards, essentially the game state. Right. Um, and there's a bunch of bunch of data here, uh, along with who the current players are, right? And what the current pool is and the state and the bet, right? So we eventually need to get to a point where, where we can start exchanging this with the front end. So let me show you how to retrieve this data from the front end, because that's that's going to be key, right? If you want to make the front end work with the back end, and you want to make the back end trigger events in the front end, you need to be able to retrieve data from the back end by calling these APIs, right? Right. So here's how you do it, because it's not it's not magic. So. <laughs> Here is uh, the console in the browser, right? Um, and hey, welcome, Dev. Hi, Dev. So um, this console has the ability we can write whatever code we want to access the back end, right? So here's how you do it. You type fetch. Um, and then I've run a few things here recently. Let me see if I can actually just load the most pre uh, previous one I ran. That's so fetch. Isn't it? <laughs> Stop <laughs> trying to make fetch happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So here we're going to fetch the API state. OK? So if you run this, you get back this promise. And a promise is, is kind of a weird thing, right? Um, but long story short, a promise is, 
it's sort of a contract that uh, the front end gives you. Um, it promises to eventually give you the data, but not right away. If you want the data right away, right away, you need to say await. And if you await, then it it'll wait for the promise to uh, to resolve. And then once the promise resolves, um, the promise gets fulfilled. And then you get the response. And if you look at the response, you'll see that the body uh, is some readable stream, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry about that. Let's just do this. So here is the state information. So we, we grab the state. And then we need to turn the state into JSON. So we say state.json. And the thing about JSON is that you'll also have, this will also be a promise. So you should await this as well. And you'll get back the state information. So we have fetch this guy, await state JSON. And if we open this, we'll see that we have our array of cards. If we look at the cards, we can see, okay, we have a two of clubs, an 11 of spades, a four of diamonds, five of spades, so on and so forth. Right, so this is our deck of cards. Nice. Right, and then also down here is we, we know who the current dealer is. So the dealer is index zero. Mm -hmm. We know what round we're on. We know what turn we're on. And then if we open up the players, we can see Shad is currently the dealer because he's index zero. And then Sachi Sharma is player one. Rickles is player two. Niwako is player three. So far, so good? Yeah, nice. So that's how you do this. Now, how do we make this all, like how can we actually do this now directly in the front end and I don't know, make a card or something, right? So let's do that together. Um, so what we'll do is we'll hop over to our front end code, main.js. Oh, thanks, Vince. Vince has joined us. Vince is a software engineer also at Google. And he helped me uh, set up a nice nice stream. Oh, Charlene's here too. Um, a second engineer at Google. Uh, Y'all don't be uh, um, uh, feel self-conscious with all these engineers on, on the, on the stream. Know, there's so many engineers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome. All right. We're total noobs. OK, that's all. <laughs> yeah, the intro is really cool. I spend so much time on the intro. I'm glad people like it. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> all right. So, um, ooh, Shalino is here to learn some web dev with us. Oh, that's good to know. Um, oh, I'm not cool. an actual web. I'm just a pretend web dev. So um, bear that in mind, Charlene. Um, Charlene wants to know why we needed to await. Um, yeah, I can show that. I can show that again. So, I meant. So if you fetch some data from the API, uh, like this, what you get back is a promise, and this promise is is basically it's kind of like it's an async async function. If you're if if you've used any of those async things before, then you know this is basically like a future or something like that. And so what a wait does is it essentially um, waits for the, the promise to resolve. So when you await it, instead of, it basically like unwraps the promise. And so you get back the actual response. And for some reason in, in JavaScript, uh, after you await the response, the object that you get back, if you want to get the JSON payload from it, you have to await that as well. I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but it is. <laughs> um, and it's all, and and for us beginners, it doesn't it doesn't really matter why. What matters is that we have a way to unwrap it, so we can await resp.json as well, and then we get back the actual data. Now these are the only two things that I'm aware of when we're doing these fetches uh, that we need to await. Um, so thankfully, this is this is okay the way it is. So what I'm thinking we could do is this little hello button that I made. When it gets clicked, we can make it go and fetch some data. 
and then based on the data that gets fetched, uh, we can try to make this UI do something so that we essentially have some like logic that's uh, you know activated by by wiring all these things together. And uh, I'm gonna make you do it, Rickles. Um, but okay. uh, I'll 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 walk you through it. Um, but before we get there, I should show you how that button ended up there. So, um, let's take a look at this index.html file, which is super basic. Mm -hmm. um, if you recall, we have our canvas, and the canvas is where all the 3D stuff is being drawn, right? And then I created this div for the buttons. But you'll notice that the div is empty, right? There's nothing. We basically open the div here, and then we close the div there. So there's nothing in this in this div, right? Yeah. With me so far. So creating the button, yeah. So if you go to main.js and you scroll down to the bo bottom, I wrote some functions. I wrote make button. <laughs> so you can sort of guess what make button does. It uh, makes a button. <laughs> and the way it does it is like this. So we start by creating an element. And the details of this actually don't matter all that much because I can write these functions for you and you can just use them. But uh, for everybody else on the stream, this A is a link in, uh, in HTML. It's like if you had put an HTML tag for A. And in fact, you could just do that. You know, We could go to index.html here, and we could add a button by, by writing what we just did. We can say A, and href equals uh, whatever. <laughs> just leave it empty for now. And then we can say... I don't know, let's put Sachi here. So this will create a Sachi button, well, a Sachi link. Yay. And then you see it sort of appear there, and then you see it appear down here. Oh, see it? Yeah. Now the Sachi link doesn't do anything, and it doesn't look like a button. And the reason for that is because we need to apply some styles to make the link look like a button. So let's do that. So we'll just go head back to main.js where I didn't mean to click on Jeff. Just main.js. Come on, Jeff. I know. <laughs> come on. So here are the three. These are the styles, and this is what makes the button look like a button. Um, I'm using I'm using a CSS library so that I didn't have to come up with this on my own. So let's head back to index, and then to make to to add the styles, we basically say class equals, and then we need to paste this stuff in. And we typically space out the classes with some spaces, and then remove that extra quote. And now when we save it, what do we get? We get Sachi. There she is, as Whoa. a button. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful, isn't it? It is. That's really good. Yeah? Okay. So that was done both in JS and in HTML. There's two, yeah. There's two ways to do it. Now you might be asking, why did I do it? This more, this I don't know. Do you? What do you think? Is this JavaScript more compl complicated, or is this index.html more complicated? Uh, well, the the well, the JS is more complicated, mm -hmm. um, but it does seem like there's the like there's more there's more of a breakdown in the JS format of it. It looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so like it, it seems to like it's more descriptive about what it does. Okay. So I'll tell you why I decided to do it in JavaScript instead of HTML. And the reason is that um, I want, like, the set of buttons that we present to the user will depend on the state of the game. Right? Let's say that it's your if it's not your turn, 
you might have a different set of buttons than when it is your turn, right? So we need programmatic access. We, that's what we say. <laughs> we, need, we need the ability to control what buttons are visible based on the state of the game. And I'm currently not using any uh, frameworks. So Satch for the Cahier uh, for Livre, that app, uh, we're using React. Um, and the reason we're using React is because uh, I just thought that would make it easy. For this game, uh, because of the 3JS, because we're doing 3D stuff, um, I, I sort of stayed away from these frameworks, like React among the other options that might exist, and decided to stick to just some plain JavaScript because um, we need more performance from a game that is going to be that's going to have some 3D animations in it. And also frameworks have a tendency to do things when you don't want them to. Um, typically that helps you. So like, for example, in the Kaye app, when you, when, when somebody updates their rating, it propagates to all places that they have the app open automatically. And that's what you want. That's, that's a good behavior. In this case here, the game is constantly doing different kinds of animations and you don't want it to get interrupted by the the framework sort of getting in the way to like tell it to do something new, tell it to do something different. So I was trying to avoid that. So unfortunately what that means is that between the two apps we're learning very different sets of things. Um, but... It's okay, we're just being dynamic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I promise that uh, that it's worthwhile. So you just need to await on that promise. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Full circle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So let's, let's just break down the JavaScript because this is actually doing slightly more than what the HTML does. So first step is we're creating a button link. And then we're adding the styles to the button to make it look like a button. Uh, then we're setting the text on the inside of the button to name. So this is how you make it have uh... <laughs> so, yeah, Charlene saw the, uh, Vince saw the, the, the joke coming <laughs> mile away. <laughs> yeah. I have a tendency to, to start smiling before I can tell the joke. So <laughs> just have it in your head. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so this name is what ended up being the text that goes here. So um, I made it say hello, and I'll show you how that happened just now in a sec. And then line 148, we have the this this on click. So now we're getting to the real meat of this um, of the story today. And this is the critical part. I'm going to do my best to explain it. So JavaScript. Uh, has this notion of callbacks. A callback is a function, uh, sort of period. That's, that's, what it, that's what it is, okay? And what you need to be able to do is, in this case, you want to say that when this button gets clicked, you want it to call a function, okay? And on click here is that function. We'll rewrite this code so that I can show you different ways that this is possible to do it. But when the button gets clicked, this onClick function is got, gets called, and it's being passed in here as an argument to this function. So I, I don't know. Let's take a step back. Let's, let's try and process that. We're basically saying that this make button takes two arguments. The first one is the name of the button, the, the text that's going to go on the button. And the second one is a function. So the function takes a function as an argument. With me so far? So it is also creating the function within this function? N oh, I actually I should uh, no. Down here, line 154 is where all is where I actually use this function, right? So make button gets called here. And you can actually see when I click it, it highlights where it's calling. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of nice. And I'm passing in the first argument. This is what gives it the word, the name hello. And this second one here is where I pass in 
a function. And that's this is another way that you can write a function, but this is no different from any other. So let's write a function that does something simple. Let's say function. And let's say let's call this function say hello. Okay? So here is our function. And we're just gonna say con uh Let's, let's, I wonder if this still works. This used to work back in the day. I think it works. Hello. All right. So say hello does this alert. So this is going to make a pop-up. So I can pass say hello. It's a function, remember? I can pass it here as an argument. You with me so, so when? Okay, so... So you create another function, and so now this new, this make button function responds to when on click, like it'll say hello. Yeah, and, and and you don't have to take my word for it. This is programming. You can just see if the computer does what you think it's going to do. So let's just save it, let the thing reload, and let's try it. So we're going to click the hello button, and then it says hello. Hello. Oh, it said it to us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah. It, 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 it said hello to us. Nice. It actually says, says. I didn't do, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> How about that? The page says hello. Yeah. Localhost3000 yeah. says hello. Okay. Thanks, localhost. So, hello. so far, so far, so good? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay. So back to, back to where we were, we were in the make button function. So, um, recap, this creates the button. This sets the styles of the button. This sets the text of the button and this sets the behavior of the button. When it gets clicked, when it gets clicked, call say hello because that's what got passed in here, right? Yeah. Now, it's one thing to create a button, but now we need to actually make it visible. We need to tell the browser what to do with this button we created. Because if you don't do anything with it, it actually will just not exist, right? You won't, it won't appear anywhere. So then the next section here is attaching the button to the browser, you know, putting it in the browser's window. And specifically, where, where in the browser you want the button to appear. So in, in our case, I want the button to appear in the buttons section. And if we go back to index.html, we'll see the buttons section. This is how it's identified. It's this div that says ID equals buttons. That's how it knows where to put it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so that's the HTML version of it. Like it's like that's the section that exists in the HTML versus the JavaScript. Yes. So let me remove the Sachi button because we don't need oh. that. I'm sorry, Sachi button's gone. Okay, I for I'll learn to forgive and forget. And forget. Okay. So we have queries. So so this bit of code here retrieves the, the buttons element. It's retrieving this div. Okay. And then this next line here is taking the button that we made and putting it inside the buttons div. So how, how does it know to call from the HTML? versus like any other no oh, it's um, a good question file there yeah that's a good question so so the, uh, I'll repeat the question like how, how does any how does any of this stuff know what it what to do right <laughs> um, so the the answer to that is index.html is where you start okay the browser starts by loading index.html then it goes through each of these elements and then it decides what to do based on the tags. So let's go through the ones that I'm actually able to explain to you. <laughs> There's a bunch here that uh, um, just don't matter. Uh, 
this one here, line six, is what will give us our our the you know in in brow you know in when you go to various websites they have little icons in the top left of the tab. Like I'm like for example here in this new tab here you have like the little Chrome icon in this fast oh, API yeah. you have this little lightning yeah. thing. Yeah. So if you make a fave icon .svg and put it inside your poker fe it will show up there next to your tab That's so cool. then we have this title this is what sets the text in the tab right right then we have our canvas and then we have our div and then we have this is the answer to your question da 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 script ah. and it points to main.js so oh, this like Sorry, say it again. Call it's that yeah, it's essentially telling the HTML to call the JavaScript code. Mm. Yeah. So that's what that's what that's what does it. Okay. So a uh, little exercise for you. Um let's make another button. And go ahead and you can just type. Uh, make a button and give it uh, the name Sachi and have it um, print out to uh, this console here uh, a message of your choice. Uh, okay. A message of my choice. Mm -hmm. Message. Yeah. Stay classy. Stay classy. <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, say classy. Uh, stay, stay. I know, I know, but it's gonna say stay classy. Oh, stay classy. So when you write stay classy, it'll be like classy. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, let's save it and see what happens. Um, is there anything else? Oh, I'm purple on done screen. All right, I'll click it for you because I don't think you can click. Well, I guess you could do it on your own machine, um, but I'm going yeah, to click Sachi. Stream. Go to the stream. Yay! Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me show you the, what I was actually wanting. What I actually wanted, so that was good. What I wanted you to do, though, is this one here, console.log, because mm -hmm. alerts are annoying. They get in the way. Um, so let's try this one out. Oh, okay. So if you do console log, instead of alerting, which stops the browser from executing all things and pauses the world, this one instead <laughs> will just print something out to the console. Stay classy. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Oh, so his showed up here. All right. All right. Now I'm going to show you something super interesting and quite advanced. But we're going to need this for our game. And I'm trying to normalize a lot of these relatively advanced concepts. I, I mean, to a large extent, you know, we'll work together on things. But the like, once you start to understand some of these concepts, I can build examples for you. And then you'll be able to, you know, duplicate the examples for your for additional features, right? So now you've seen how to make some buttons. You've sort of seen how to make those buttons do something, right? We haven't made them do anything especially interesting yet, but you can now, you now actually have enough knowledge to make these buttons. Let's say the cards get dealt to you, right? And they're face down. You can now have a reveal button that if you click, will, will start an animation routine that will flip the cards over, right? Right. So you would make, you would make a button that says reveal cards, for example, and you press it, it runs a function that tells the animation, and, and we have code here that, that used to do animation, right? Like here's a good one here, this function animate. You would just uh, essentially like have something in here that knows, hi mom. Hi mom. You would just have something in here that will rotate the card and reveal it, right? So we can, 
we can we can actually write a bunch of that code together um because it's going to be fun <laughs> so definitely worth doing All yeah right. we could even try like an on click for even just the cube that's there right to like to make it rotate sure yeah. you want it do you want to do that um we got 20 minutes i have time to show you an, a server side event which is a very cool thing or we could mm -hmm. we could play with some animations what's what's your oh. What's your preference? Show me the server side stuff because I, I don't even know where to start with that. <laughs> All right. Let's go. <laughs> Watermelon's so good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so we like, had some a couple days ago. And it's just glorious. It's like your AC. <laughs> yeah. It's like a good summer spritz. You know, when it's hot here, the best thing is like cold water and watermelon. And yeah. specifically, I don't know what it is, but I just like refrigerated watermelon. <laughs> yeah, the colder it is, the better it is. Sure. All right. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to show you a server side event. To understand the server side event, though, requires a bit of, a bit of, uh... oh, actually, before we do that, um, I want to make you do one more thing. Okay, so we did we did this stay classy, another exercise. I want the next thing for you to do is go and fetch our API status from the back end, and then print the two cards that belong to you to the console. Okay, so I'm in the console. Uh -huh. Fetch. Um, how does it go again? Close, open bracket, API. Um, sorry, I forgot the name of the oh. API. So let me show, uh, like, uh, this is not a, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm just going to show you. This is this is the code for it, yeah? Okay. Oh, okay. Is this good enough? Oh, yeah. So fetch on its own just creates the promise, but the await, right? It's so clear when it's full screen. It's... And do we have to do oh wait so the response is so that we can see what the oh wait so so um maybe yeah. i didn't maybe i wasn't clear rickles what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to ask you to do is mm -hmm. in the editor here make a button that when you click it oh <laughs> does those things then i can actually see okay. what you're doing <laughs> and i can help you okay so it's asking for the console log so maybe i can just change this to instead of sasachi it would be to pitch. um and would this make this true like if i make the console do a code do a code would that work through the console log uh yeah it would but we can write this in a, in several lines you can actually write the code just as i presented it in oh, so yeah right. mm -hmm. so... I, I should maybe i didn't tell you this console log here behaves just like um your editor except you can see the results as you do it oh okay so, uh, so if I just without the quotes typed in the code, so like it'll it'll enter it to the log. Mm hmm. Why don't you try? You don't need okay. to. You don't need to ask me. You can try it out and see what happens. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this one. Okay. 
save. Oh, something happened. Syntax error. Mm -hmm. So before, so before you can do that, you need to, you need to first make resp. So here's the code oh, again. Resp. So Sorry the first saying. line here is this one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah, this is not that's not gonna work. So create a new line after right before one fifty nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. So it would Would we, would we do this? Let's try that. Why not? Saved. Okay. All right. So let me help you out a little bit. I'm just I'm going to give you a little hint. Yeah. Okay. So here is here is the first step. Um, you almost have it, just so you know. So you do it like this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. And I think that actually I think you want this to say let. All right. Okay, let's try saving that. Okay, still a problem. Want to take a guess what to do next? It's telling uh, you, by the way, that... Uh... Oh. oh I know the... Hold on, hold on. I don't think you're going to figure this one out. I think, you need... I think you need the word async in front of this function in order for it to work. Uh, async function. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's try it. Okay. Fetch. Hey, there's the payload. Yeah. It's there. Nice. Cool. Okay. Um, I forgot about this. Um, so I should I should uh, inform you what I forgot about. When in JavaScript you use the word await, you need to make sure that you stick the word async in front of the function name. Otherwise, okay. for reasons, things won't work properly. Um, you don't need to know the reasons why. So is it, well, just, just to take a stab at it, is it, me, is it because it's in itself, it's also a feedback loop? Like it doesn't know when when if there's actually another result or response coming out, like it has to essentially ask itself if it's still there or if some, it's getting a response. Um, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what you, what, you, what, what you just said. So I will just, <laughs> I will tell you, I'll tell you the reason in, in as okay. uh, without using as much any jargon as best I can. So under the hood, these promises, um, Under the hood, these promises, the way they work is typically, okay, one step back. Imagine a weight didn't exist. Imagine that it, it uh, didn't exist in the world, right? In JavaScript land, you don't have it. And once upon a time, that's how it used to be. The way that this worked was you make a call, you do fetch, and it retrieves a thing and you get back a promise. And then what you do is you say the promise dot then so you're basically passing an argument to the promise. You say to promise, hey, when you're ready, when you figure out what the response is, when you finally figure that out, I want you to call this callback. The same way that this make button has a callback, the promise has a callback. And so you can pass a callback and say, when you're done, let me know and call this, let me know by calling this function that I'm gonna give you, right? 
So it used to look like the code used to look something like this. It'd be something along the lines of function, say classy, and then you would say let promise one. Let's say the promise. Just say let promise equal fetch this API state. Okay. Then I need to say when that's done, do something else. So I'll say promise dot then, and now I pass it a callback. So that will be do a thing with the fetch promise. Okay. And this now needs to be a function, right? And it takes the resolved thing, the thing that came out of the promise. Mm -hmm. And then I can keep doing this. I can keep unwrapping promises and passing the the uh, the uh, the callback function to the promise, and the promise will call it for me when when it resolves, right? Mm -hmm. But as you can start to see, this is becoming a little bit unwieldy, <laughs> right? So JavaScript introduced some sugar, is what we call it, some uh, some stuff to make the syntax a little sweeter, right? And so instead of passing callbacks uh, over and over again, which makes your code more and more complex, we can just say await. And this await basically says, okay, um, every all the code that comes after this, after this line, line 159, essentially is code that belongs in another function that would be part of a callback. Does that sort of make sense? That's what's happening here. So it's that's why I didn't want to get into it. This is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's essentially what's happening. Um, but if you do these things, then the thing that say classy returns is not the actual result. It's also going to be a promise because the callbacks is what it returns. The result of, of, the, of the promise is a promise. And so what you're returning is yet another promise, which means that this function does not return the actual result of the cards. It returns um, the... the uh, a promise that one day it will get resolved, you know? Long story short, you don't need to worry about it. If it says await in here, you need an async up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got okay. it. All right. Um, and very frequently, we'll need to await things. So this will just become yeah. standard practice. I'm starting to realize that it's kind of like the heart of any video game. Because every any action will require a reaction and something to yes. fulfill. Yes. Not only video games, though. Actually, a very large amount of interaction with the user is asynchronous, because you need to you need to wait for the user to do something. You need to, you need to wait for the server to do something. You need to wait for timeouts to happen. You need to wait for all these things. There's always there's always something you're awaiting. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do the last, the server side, the server side thing. So, okay. so I made a thing. Um, let's save that and go back to main.py. My computer's running super slow. I think it's really hot. Yeah, it's overheating. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. So we have our, we have this bit of code that I wrote for you here. Now, it looks complicated. This is Python, by the way, not Java, JavaScript anymore. Um, uh, some while statements. Ooh <laughs> some while statements. So you don't need, just so you know, you don't need to understand this code. I'm just going to tell you what it does, and uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you it working. And then we'll do a little exercise together where you wire up a button that invokes it, OK? And that will be that will be it for today, yeah. So let's talk about it. So this 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 function is a prototype that I wrote for us. We we will use this. We will use it to um, provide a timeout for the user. 
So for the for the player, if so, if the player doesn't play within 30 seconds, we will perform a default action for the user. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's what this this code is going to do for us. Now let me tell you. Let's just sort of work it out together. Um, when it's the user's turn, uh, there are the server has to do something, right? Eventually. Um, but it has to wait. So let's so let's imagine it's your turn. You have to either, and it's it's just a we're just a, it's just your turn to make a bet. Okay, so you can either check or call, whichever one it is, or raise or fold. Those are the three options that you have. Um, if it times out, the default action we should give it one. If if the timeout happens, then uh, we should maybe check if there is no bet, or fold if you don't want to like if if someone has made some if if you have to call instead of check, then then your then the default action might be fold. Right. Right. Okay. So if if that's if that's the logic we're going with, then two then one of two events need to happen on the server. Either the user clicks the one of the buttons and sends a message to the server or the server times out and gives up on the user and performs the action for the user on their behalf automatically right okay so those are our two options this enables us to to do this okay so let's try it out um, i'll show you how to so this is a called a web socket and web sockets are they're essentially um, a way of doing some bi-directional communication so so far we've done fetch and when we do fetch that's the browser talking to the server a web socket allows us to make the web web server talk to the browser in the other direction right so before it used to be the case you make a you make a request and you get your cards from the server for example you get the state information in this other case you don't need to make a call to the server well technically you do you need to make a connection to the server and then you hold the connection and you wait on the connection and eventually you'll get a message that things have happened so this this bit of code is quite a bit more complex but uh, let's let's just I'll just show you how it works and then I will write this we will write this code into our main JS and then we will uh, save it and I will commit it to the repository and you'll have it yeah okay so uh, oops that's old some that's some old code that's not the code I want but um, how do I get uh, Okay, so here is the here is the code. It's just a blob. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy paste it into the file for us shortly. But nice blob. yeah, a nice little blob. But you now sort of have enough information to sort of uh, unpack this yourself. So I'm gonna move this code over to here and make it a I'll make it a function in main.js. Okay. So we'll just call, we'll just say function. Um, and this function needs to be essentially, uh, op uh, like when, when the game starts, we are going to establish this connection with the server. And then over t and then after some, like we will use this connection to essentially get messages from the server. The way this function currently works though, is it eventually runs out. So after 30 seconds, it will stop working. We will change it later to basically hold the connection forever as long as the game's going on. Okay. So so it won't have a 30 second limit. So right. let's call this function uh, uh, connect, I guess. Connect is as is a fine word because we're we're essentially connecting to the server. And we'll just put this blob of code in there. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's uh, most of this is just some processing to make things uh, sort of behave the way uh, the way I want. So this one here is the thing that establishes the connection. You'll notice a bunch of 
code here. <laughs> ignore it. Yeah, a lot of slashes. Yeah, ignore it. It's just some string processing to convert the URL from localhost colon 3000 to, to the same thing, to localhost. Uh, so I need, basically, this URL is different from the normal URL. Um, I should actually just type it out so that you can understand what's going on here. That, that bit of code, all it's doing is this. That's all it's doing, OK? It's making this piece of string. It, it's useful to have it be dynamic, because if you're running this on another server somewhere else, it needs to be different from localhost 3000. And so that code makes sure that it's the same URL as the website you're currently running this thing on. The bit that matters is here. I need this to be WS. Normally, it's HTTP. Now I need it to be WS, right? OK. So we are talking to WS test. And WS test is this function here, right? Oh. OK, that's what that's, that's what that's doing. And we'll, we'll come up with, our, with a better name later, but that's what this is. Now, these are callbacks, if you recall. <laughs> some, mm -hmm. some callbacks are <laughs> happening, right? So before we had we had this button on click, right? This one here is a button, sorry, a WebSocket on message. And what this is telling us is basically every time a message is sent by the server, this function here gets called. Right? It's not that complicated. And all I'm doing is logging what the what the message is, mm -hmm. OK? And what we'll do is, so we have this nice fetch, which is, say, classy. Let's have another one for connect, OK? And then this is calling our connect function. OK, so there's the connect button. And if we look at our main.py, we will see that uh, we have this WebSocket test, and it's going to run this bit of code. And I'm trying to tell you that it doesn't matter. You don't need to know what it is, so I'm not going to explain each line. What I'm going to do is click Connect, and we'll see what it does. Sound good? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Connect. Do it. Oh, no. WS is not defined. OK, let's go back to here. OK, let's see what's wrong. So this should be let ws equal those things. And let's try again. Connect. OK, look at it go. Whoa, it keeps going. Ah. So these messages that you're seeing, you, said it says, you see it says time remaining, and there's a number yeah. counting down. Whoa. So we've configured the server. I'll show you in a sec to essentially send these messages every second, showing the time remaining. We wouldn't actually do this in the real game. In the real game, we would just send one message that you have 30 seconds, and then we'll send one final message when your time's up. So it'll be the client's job to, to, to keep track of each one. But this was useful for you to see multiple messages being sent by our backend server to the client. Wow. That's cool. That's so cool. This is just like when I did an exam online. They really? Time me. Yes. A message. Yes. For five minutes left. Mm. This is also the same code you would use if you wanted to make a chat app. Uh, so you have people log in. And then when they send a message to the server, the server then takes the message and sends it uh, back to all to all the clients that are currently in the chat group. Or if there's only one other person, then send the message to them, right? Yeah. So so let's just quickly unpack this and then we'll end the stream. Uh, so we have these message events. Each one of them appeared, and you can see the contents of them. Was this time remaining, time remaining, time remaining. And then there mm -hmm. was this final event, close. Close event, yes. So when we build our game, we will not have a close event. We will keep the, the, the connection open 
as long as the browser is there and or until the game ends, right? So we just keep the connection open and we use that connection to to push the game along. If if let's say the you know the player stops playing, then that's how you that's how you uh, you know make sure you force them to play. Otherwise, they can just walk off and then uh, everybody has to wait. So I'll quickly walk through how this code works and then we'll be done. So we have uh, this first line, await ws.accept. What that is doing is waiting for a connection from a browser. So when you hit the connect button, it's making a connection and this is waiting for it, right? So when we click that connect button, it's waiting to, to get here, essentially. The server is waiting for someone to connect. And multiple people could connect. So that's the cool thing. With me so far? Mm -hmm. OK. This here is uh, setting a time in the future for when um, the connection will be done, for when we'll, we'll finish running this function. That's what this is, right? So it's saying now plus 30 seconds in the future. Then we have a while loop. So while um, the delta, meaning to say while this minus um, now, so while the end time, which is now 30 seconds in the future, minus the current time is uh, greater than zero. Sorry, so this little guy here, date, date time, time delta, the default value of a time delta that has no arguments is zero. So as long as the time, the time difference between this future end event and now is greater than zero seconds, then you're going to do this loop, right? Mm -hmm. And in this loop, we're just basically saying WebSocket send some JSON that says time remaining, the number of seconds. That's this delta here. Like, so this is this delta is equal to end minus now. So the future minus now. And um, we're just pulling out how many seconds are in that delta and encoding it into the JSON. And then we're telling the function to wait for one second. Right? The real wow. version of this code will wait for this connection and do, and do all kinds of different logics. But one of the main ones will, will be when it's the user's turn, we will sleep 30 seconds. And when the 30, if we haven't received a message from the cert from the user within that 30 seconds, we'll send a message saying, sorry, you lost your turn, moving on to the next player, and we'll move the game along. Wow. That's a neat code you got there. It's so packed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people say when, when I write, when my code is too complex. So I'll try and break it down, <laughs> make it simpler in the future. <laughs> Sorry. No, I think like it's, I mean, considering everything it's doing, it's only on like five lines of code. Oh. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying it's not too much code, mm -hmm. but very detailed. It's not necessarily a good thing. It's better to be nice and clear and spacious, I guess so that beginners can understand. My goal is to, to do that. So I will take that. I, I, I understand you mean it as a compliment, but I will take it as criticism. <laughs> um. is, there a, is there a more simple way to do that one? There are a few ways, yes. Um, maybe. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. It, as, uh, as you get oh, more yeah. experienced writing code, it's it becomes hard to put yourself in other people's shoes, right? So, I'm sure there's an easier, way, a simpler. No, I shouldn't say that. Like this is simple for me, right? Um, but I'm sure that there is a way to write this that is clearer to beginners. Um, mm. Like for example, maybe, maybe I could break this down. Um, there's probably ways. I it can't think of one right now. Find a math equation or something. Mm -hmm. So, what did you guys? What did you guys think? 
yeah, this is uh, amazing. Like, I think the whole idea of, you know, because I, I could even see how the counter is moving and, you know, when the players on the front end are looking at everything, you could easily just call for that exact same counter to be shared while it's doing the whole log counting at the same time. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm kind of curious now to know more about how much work you had to do to tie everything together between the front oh, end and the back. I'm happy to show you. Uh, it's actually not as much work as you might think, uh, but it is boring work that is not at all interesting. Um, so we were we were heading this way the whole time. I was uh, not going especially out of my way. Like, how do I put this? I knew that we would have to do this, so I, I was just taking my t I was making sure that we didn't do anything that I would have to modify lots of code to get there. Um, but let me show you uh, what changes I did make. Actually, we can look at it on, on GitHub. So let's go there to Darkmon. Uh, so I made changes to both repositories. So here's the back end one. Let's take a look at my code change that I made. Uh, how do I look at commits again? this bigger um, cuz I didn't make a pull request for it because I wasn't planning to send the pull request to you. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's the button I click. Commits. And then here is the the change. Hi mom. Oh, that's the wrong button. This one. <laughs> okay, so here are the changes I made. So let's walk through the change, yeah? So we have... Uh, oh, am I still presenting? I'm not. Sorry. We're watching your stream. Yeah, we're watching your stream. Oh, okay. It's not that far off. Okay, yeah, sounds good. So I have the... Uh... So I just wrote some readme so that you can see how to start the server. Uh, for yourself, you can actually follow these instructions to to get it started. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, That's so nice. Wow. Yeah, no problem. And uh, I made some changes here, just imports to the top there. If you're seeing like formatting changes, that's just because I'm running an auto formatter that auto formatted. So you can ignore those changes; they're not important. Um, and I, yeah, as you can see, like actually the main set of changes uh, just happened down here. Like I just added this WebSocket. That was it, just added, that's basically all the code I changed from this repository. Now let's mm. take a look at the front end one. Uh, commits again, let's go. Okay, so there's the first one here. So this first change here is what makes it possible for us to, in the front end, make calls to the back end. So this is the, remember I was telling you that we have a proxy server? So what this is saying is, if you talk to API or WebSockets, then send the connection to localhost 8000, right? Because 3000 is where uh, node is running, the node server. Right. And 8000 is where the Python backend server is running. They're running on separate ports. They're separate things, right? So this is what it allows us to make one of them connect to the other one. So, yeah. Yeah, so you had to create another web or server website or server for you to be able to allow the front end and the back end to talk to one another yeah yeah um but thankfully like this tool that we're using veet um has a lot of these things sort of just available and built in so i was very happy i didn't have to do much like it's nice that i only had 12 lines of code to to make this config uh to make this proxy config work um, and then I, 
uh, and then I have, and then there's a separate commit I did for the front end changes. So I cleaned up the HTML file and uh, there's some, again, formatting changes due to the automatic formatter that we have running. So you can ignore most of this. And then, and then I just have the make button code that I wrote for us at the bottom. So that's it. Nice. So not, not that much, I would say. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's it. We need some homework. Um, so I, I think the, the, the best, the best homework we can do is you were originally gonna, um, I think you, you did manage to get uh, the poker stuff on the cube, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we can, uh, it's going to be some trouble because I've committed some code. Um, maybe I should help you guys. Maybe we should walk through how to apply your changes or you could just redo the changes on, on the latest version that, that you downloaded from Satch and then uh, commit it and send it back. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to commit my changes right now. Let's let's do that real fast. So I think I only made changes in the front end. So let's head over to the front end. Poker FE. Git status. Git add. Git commit. And then let's put the message. Um, so what did we do today? Let's take a look. Oh, that reminds me. Um, do you mind? I'm going to put back that uh, ugly bits of code that did all that nonsense. <laughs> um, no, I'm going to leave it. It's fine. We can always change it later. Uh, the, the WebSocket connection thingy. I had some sophisticated logic to essentially produce WS colon slash slash localhost 3000. Um, we can add that back later, though. It doesn't need to be done, done now. Git commit dash m. And what we've basically done is we've done WebSockets and fetches and um, buttons all, all today. So buttons, um, async fetch, and WebSockets. Oh, my. Git push. All right. Okay, so homework will be um, pull my changes, and um, maybe let's let's get rid of all the files we no longer need. There's like a lot of Jeff pictures and Moon pictures, space pictures. Let's get rid of all that stuff and yeah. uh, try to get poker cards in, and uh, try to get. Um, uh, the poker table. I saw that you had a poker table added, so we can add that. Yes. And then our next session, I'm thinking that what we can do is something like uh, maybe we should have a, a game lobby uh, where we can start a game. Wow. I yeah, because we do need to be able to start a game, so we can we can we can focus on that next time. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming to the stream. Everyone on YouTube. Thanks, Don. That's great. Thanks, Rick. Everything looks so clean. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. Let's see how it goes. All right. Thanks, Don. Thanks. Yeah, make sure you guys commit your changes and push them up uh, when, you, when you're done so that I can take a look. Will do. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yeah, happy Satch happy birthday, thing. Satch. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for adjusting the schedule. Yeah, no problem. So Monday's good for everyone next next week? Yeah, should be good. Yeah, okay. Monday's good. Bye.